Welcome to Movie Morons, where we like to pitch our dream sequels for some of the biggest franchises in Hollywood. Today we'll be discussing Transformers and Friday the 13th. Jackson, what do you have for us today? All right, so the first movie pitch that I've got is for the uh, Transformers franchise. Yep. This is going to be sort of a, a spin-off taking place in the Transformers world. Uh-huh, because we did hear about that they were going to do, you know, spin-offs, sequels, prequels, yep. cartoons. Going to make a whole world up. Other movies. Yep. All right. So this movie is, uh, it takes place after the events of Age of Extinction. Uh-huh. Megatron. So you might want to refresh us on, like, what happened at the end of Age of Extinction. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, I mean, essentially, the the important thing is is that Megatron is back under a new assumed name, Galvatron, uh, and now he's got he's more powerful than before. I assume because he's got nanobite transforming technology. Yeah, whatever. So something <laughs> like that, and uh, you know, all the Autobots are back, and all the Decepticons that you love, they're all there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But in this movie here, it takes place after uh, Age of Extinction. Megatron, the leader of the terrorist cell known as the Decepticons, goes into hiding under the assumed name Galvatron. <laughs> Is that like his high height? <laughs> he got a new passport and ID. Yeah, yeah. Galvatron. Galvatron. Megatron. Okay. So, you know, kind of to take the heat off a little bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he's going under the name Galvatron here, and they think that he may be holed up somewhere in Syria. <laughs> okay. Okay, so obviously, you know, it's it's a difficult situation because, you know, all the turmoil going on in Syria added by having Decepticons there as well. Yes. You know, the United States military is like, we can't, you know, we can't touch that or else we're going to spend another five years in this quagmire of a war with a terrorist cell that's also Transformers. <laughs> so are you going to have the terrorists helping the I mean, the Transformers helping the terrorists? I assume that the Decepticons moved there, and they kind of just took over ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so ISIS so is now ISIS led is now by... ISIS now the Decepticons. <laughs> so ISIS, ISIS is now led by um, Megatron? Yeah, yeah. ISIS, <laughs> they've changed their names to the Decepticons, too. Okay. And things like that. So Syria, it's just, it's all bone. You know, the United States, they want to go ahead and, you know you know, execute Megatron for his crimes against, you know, their country, but they have to, you know, initiate war with Syria and the Decepticons initially. So, they, uh, instead of the, um, instead of the United States military going, Sector 7, the, uh, you know, the sort of shady government uh, agency in the Transformer world actually decides to take over. Sector 7? Yeah, remember in uh, the... No, I don't movies. remember what happened in any of the movies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John Totoro was like the... Was that what his group yeah, was called he, or whatever? Yeah, he was from Sector 7. Okay. And I think uh, the one lady in the third movie was the leader, and then she was kissing John Totoro or something. Oh. Yeah. Respected but, actress, Frances McDormand. <laughs> yeah, Frances McDormand was kissing John Totoro. She was like the director of Sector 7, I think. Okay. Probably um, Tad Hamilton and Tyrese worked there, too. Yeah, yeah, probably those guys, too. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, and Tad Tyrese. Ham Tad Ham I don't know. Whoever, go ahead. But anyway, <laughs> Sector 7 is like, don't worry, we'll take care of this. You know, we've got, you know, we know, we pinpointed where we believe he is. Uh, we just need to send, like, one just tight black ops mission to go in there, execute him, and then leave. <laughs> okay, so they're going to... Zero Dark Thirty in a bit? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. This is going to be like Zero Dark Thirty, <laughs> but for Transformers. <laughs> Instead of Osama Bin Laden, it's Megatron under the assumed name of Galvatron. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> His secret identity is yeah, Galvatron. Yeah, Galvatron. Okay. So they're going to terminate Megatron here. Uh, enter uh, Sector 7 intelligence analyst uh, Samantha Summers, or Sam... She goes by <laughs> another Sam. Another Sam, <laughs> and she's played by uh, Jessica Chastain <laughs> from Zero Dark Thirty. So what happened to Mark Wahlberg? 
He's he, this is a spinoff. So <laughs> he's off doing whatever with uh, you know Dude, Optimus Prime, five. but Jessica Chastain is the one doing all the dirty work behind the scenes. <laughs> 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 so Mark Wahlberg gets to have all the fun. Yeah, he gets all, all the, low the fun, but all gritty. the low-down, dirty execution min- missions are done by Jessica Chastain and her tight group of Black Ops uh, team, which uh, it consists of a few humans and uh, a few Autobots. Um, one, uh, one of the Autobots in their group is Dagger, played by Christoph Waltz. <laughs> He'll be the voice of Christoph Dagger. Waltz. Yeah, he's he's uh, one of those smaller transformers or whatever, but he turned into a knife. Okay. Or sorry, sorry, not a knife, a katana blade. <laughs> Why is there dagger? If he's a katana blade. You know, because it's like a big dagger. <laughs> <laughs> a katana blade is just a large dagger. Okay. So he turned into a dagger, or it could be a katana blade for a human, but in the hands of another transformer, it would be a dagger. Okay. <laughs> so he's he's dagger, and uh, then we have another uh, transformer, uh, part of the black ops group again, named Cloak. <laughs> <laughs> He's cloak a, and dagger. Yeah, cloak okay. and dagger. You know, you get it. It's like yeah, yeah. the Transformers usually do. Uh, and uh, he's a stealth bomber, so he's a big Transformer. And he'll be voiced by uh, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Ah, yeah. So you can imagine, like, you know, because he's kind of the opposite. You know, his skill is being, like, invisible and cloaking and things like that, but he's very loud and boisterous. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there's some hijinks to be had there. Okay. <laughs> Transformer style hijinks. Yeah, uh, Christoph and then, Waltz is a dagger. Yeah, okay. Christoph Waltz is a dagger and he's little. And um, let's see, uh, we also have Tyrese on the team. So Tyrese is back? Tyrese is back. Okay. He's on the team too. So they all, you know, they get together, they're planning to take out Megatron and everything like that. They're, you know, doing some, you know, spy things to try and kind of, you know, narrow down where he's at. And they, you know, they, um, they, uh, they narrow it down to, a, you know, this one complex in Syria, you know, this one, like, military complex where he's holed up. And they're about to go and strike. However, Jessica Chastain doesn't know this, but both Tyrese and Cloak were very good friends with Josh Duhamel, who was killed by Galvatron or Megatron in, you know, Whatever, yeah. in between movies. Okay. Josh Duhamel, and she doesn't know that they're very broken up about this, so it's personal for them. So they decide to go rogue, and they attack the <laughs> complex before Jessica Chastain is completely ready. Causing, and, you know, of course, once they get there, you know, Megatron knows that they're coming, and then he just he kills them both. <laughs> kills Tyrese and... Yeah, Tyrese and, and, Cloak. Uh, and Cloak both get killed. Nicolas Cage and Tyrese both get killed. <laughs> uh, Jessica Chastain and uh, Dagger are both, they're both compromised and stuff like that, so now their mission is to try and get out of Syria alive. You know, <laughs> fighting through this, you know, terrorist, you know, Decepticons, ISIS combination to get back into U.S. controlled territory. And, and you know, not to spoil the movie, but eventually at the very <laughs> they end, get they, out. Do. <laughs> they get out. They get out. Those two live, but unfortunately, Nicolas Cage and Tyrese died and they ruined the mission. <laughs> and Megatron is still alive. So More the, powerful than ever. So the majority of the movie would be them essentially running from. Galvatron and his goons. The majority of the climax, yeah. So what's the rest of the movie? (laughs) Well, I mean, yeah, the the movie, like, throughout the rest of the movie is them, like, narrowing down where he is. You're establishing, like, you know, oh, well, we know that he's in this part of Syria, and then they have to do some, like, spy missions and things like that, go around, take pictures, talk on the cell phone, and stuff like that. Okay, okay, so... Then you get to kind of know the characters. You get to know Cloak is very boisterous, and Dagger is very, like... You know, Christoph Waltzy. Mm-hmm. Tyrese is Tyrese. <laughs> yeah, Tyrese is pretty much the same Tyrese. Just, but then Chastain. also, you see, like, behind closed doors, Tyrese acts like Tyrese, but then he's very, you know, in pain behind closed doors because his best friend was killed by Megatron, and he feels so close to revenge that he just can't help himself. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Transformers Black Ops. That's transform. That's the sp- spinoff. So it'd be called 
Transformers universe. Black Ops. Black Ops. Yep. <laughs> or Transformers. Or Black Bots. Black Bots. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that works. Um, so, as always, who's going to direct it? Uh, ooh, director. Um, let's see. This one here, I'm thinking a very, like, nighttime vibe. Uh, friggin' like, uh... Yeah, just to get the lady that did Zero Dark Thirty. <laughs> uh, what's her name? Uh, Catherine Bigelow. Catherine Bigelow. Yeah, because she did the Hurt Locker too, so you can have her because she can, you know, you know, pull out that military pain that Tyrese would have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, so PTSD and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I, I mean, I'm just thinking of Tyrese being like, hey, everybody. And then, like, he shuts the door and he's like, <laughs> Hurt Locker! Hurt Locker! Yeah. There you go. See? <laughs> <laughs> so, Catherine Bigelow's on board to direct. Uh, <laughs> For some reason. Um, <laughs> this is Zero Dark Thirty. We, get, we bring back Jessica Chastain. We got Nicolas Cage. And we got Christoph Waltz and Tyrese. Yep. Perfect cast. Well, <laughs> and a couple of them are pretty good. I'd like to hear Nicolas Cage's voice. That'd be pretty cool. As a Transformer. Yeah, like, oh, I'm Nicolas Cage. That's right, I'm Cloak. I turn into a stealth bomber. And I'm real sneaky. Put down the bunny. Put what? down the bunny. Megatron. <laughs> Killed my best friend, Josh DeHamel. <laughs> Me and Tyrese are really broke it up about that. Yeah, Josh Duhamel was a really good guy, and you killed him. <laughs> he was a good guy. He was a really good guy. <laughs> and then Megatron's like, I don't even remember killing him. <laughs> yeah, he's like, you might think it was the worst day of your life, but to me it was a Tuesday. <laughs> there you go. See, and you get to bring back that great line. <laughs> Uh, voiced by, you know, Frank Welker would be back as Galvatron slash Megatron. Yep. Um, but yeah. Would you have any other characters in it? Like maybe like a cameo by like Bumblebee or whatever or something like that? Uh, probably not. Because I feel like uh, this is like all completely off the books. The government doesn't want, uh, they don't want, uh, you know, the rest of the Autobots to know that they're doing these secret Black Ops missions behind their backs to kill other Transformers. Okay, yeah, because that makes sense. Um, yeah, because <laughs> Bumblebee might tell Optimus Prime, and then Optimus Prime would be like, hey, you know, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it my way, and then the government would be like, ah, uh, <laughs> they don't want Optimus Prime leading the missions, they want a human leader, which is why they got Jessica Chastain. Okay, so that makes sense, Yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, so, all right, so... No cameos uh, by that guy. Maybe there'd be some cameos by, like, Starscream or something like that. I'd, I'd also maybe start off to say, like, you know, this team has been working together for a while. You know, maybe they have, like, 43 confirmed Decepticon kills or something. And maybe you have, like, a cameo. Like, A-team-ish? Like. Yeah, like A-team-ish, you know, to where they've been together for a while. They've killed several leaders in the Decepticon cell and maybe Starscream or something that they've killed or something. And now they're going after Megatron. They're going after the big fish. Yeah, but I couldn't remember if their Starscream died or not already. But I Who guess cares? You it can bring them back. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? He brought them back. Um, yeah, sounds interesting, as they always do. It's great. Um, okay, so let's hear about your uh, Friday the 13th pitch now. So Friday the 13th. So essentially, I thought Friday the 13th, it's like where... Where could they go from there? Jason's been to space. He's been in the dreams fighting Freddy. He's been underwater. And he's been everywhere. I would say the only place, the only territory you could take him next is the world of spying. Spying? Yeah, spying. Okay. Like, I would turn it into a straight up spy movie. Because in the world of Jason, I mean, who's better at killing people than Jason? I mean, and at That's that true. point, if I were the government, I would recruit Jason as a government assassin. And that's what exactly what happens in this movie. We have some sort of government agent, Brian Cox or something like that, 
uh, recruits Jason, you know, brings him in and is like, you know, I like the way you do business. You know, you've got 400 confirmed kills or whatever. How many ever kills he's got in the movies? He's like, you've killed 400 teenagers just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, I like a man with your moxie. I mean, you give you some direction, and you could really do this country some good, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I like your moxie. Okay, like so, your moxie. so yeah, they're recruiting him to be like a Jason Bourne. You yeah, know? yeah. instead of Jason uh, Bourne, you got Jason. <laughs> the real Jason, the original Jason. The real Jason. So, you know, there's like maybe a training montage or whatever where they, you know, fit him with like maybe some some standard government weapons and stuff like that, machetes and things like that. They, you know, you know they try. They don't. They well, you maybe you could have a scene where he's like, you know, they're like, here, try it. You know, this, you know, yeah, M sixteen or whatever. And he's like, no. He like shakes his head no, and then he like, you know, instead grabs for a machete. <laughs> And he's like, this is my weapon. And they're like, okay, whatever, you know, it works. Yeah, they're at a shooting range or something, and somebody hands him, like, a gun, and he, like, picks it up, he puts it back down, he picks up the machete and just throws it and hits right in the middle of the target, and they're just, like, clapping. Like, like, good like, job, great, great. Jason. He's a genius. He's a genius uh, assassin. Mm-hmm. So, you know, fast forwards maybe a couple years, they're like, you know, he's, you know, killed, like, you know, 84 more, you know, <laughs> confirmed targets for the government, you know, heads of state, you know, heads of drug cartels, things like that. You know, they've even dropped him in South America and he's taken down an entire, like, <laughs> drug really? cartel by himself. So, you know, you know, Jason's gotten pretty good at this. He's finally found his calling. You know, he's like, now I can <laughs> kill teenagers <laughs> and not get in trouble. Well, not teenagers. <laughs> I can kill people and not get in trouble. Yeah. He's like, I gotta get out of the fact that I can't kill teenagers. Yeah. But outside of that, I mean, I get to kill people for yeah, fun. Yeah, I get it's to kill fun. people for fun, and I'm helping my country. Yeah. So, because <laughs> <I'm> American, because <laughs> <laughs> he is American. It's Count Camp Wickedasha or whatever he came from. Uh, Crystal Lake. Crystal Lake. Yeah, America. Yeah, it's uh, what like New York or whatever, wherever it's from. Mm-hmm. It's in America. So, essentially, he's had all these kills, confirmed assassin, all these things, and eventually it gets to the point where they're like, we need you to go on this mission, but it's not like any of your other missions here. This mission is going to require you to do a little bit of covert ops. Usually, you just walk in there and you hack somebody (laughs) to death with your machete. (laughs) Yeah, it'll be like some guy sitting behind a desk, like, looking through papers, and he's just like, you know, we need to bomb, you know, this place or whatever. Or they're like, we we're selling drugs over here, and then just all of a sudden, Jason, <laughs> Jason bursts breaks in through and just the wall. Him, yeah, just hacks him to death, and then just turns around and walks away. Yeah, no like subtlety, no like sneaking in or nothing like that. He just hacks him to death, and then walks away. Yeah, or or like you know they're in like a room full of like. Uh, terrorists or whatever, and they think that they've killed him, just like in the movie, and they walk <laughs> away, and then he gets back up and then hacks him all to death again. <laughs> so, yeah, so you know, that's usually how he operates, but he's like, you know, Jason, we need you to be able to go in, you know, you need to infiltrate this, you know, fancy dinner party or whatever, you know, we need you to put on a tuxedo, you Depends know, go James in Bond. there. <laughs> yeah, he, he's got to try and James Bond just a little bit. So, you know, so that would be sort of the, the crux of the movie is him struggling through this kind of James Bond, almost Casino Royale-ish like mission, except without the card playing, of course. Well, but maybe it could be card playing. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it does some card playing. But and they're uh, like, we can't have, we, we don't know his tell. What is his tell? <laughs> and he's just like got the hockey mask on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the hockey mask on, but a tuxedo. Yeah, but too. a tuxedo. <laughs> But it's like, what is this tell? What we is can't. this tell? <laughs> and they're just like, what's your name? And he's like, Jason. <laughs> well, maybe he doesn't, because he doesn't talk. Like, is that your only name? <laughs> Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Jason. If you did talk, it'd be like that. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of Bond, James Bond, he's just like, Jason! (laughs) Well, Voorhees. His name is Voorhees. Oh, yeah, he'd be like, Voorhees! (laughs) Jason Voorhees! (laughs) And then she'd be like, ah. (laughs) Ah, Mr. Voorhees. Would he be like, um, like getting women and stuff like that? Or maybe uh, I think the women attracted. would be wanting to get with him. But he's just but like, he's too just busy focused on the mission. Hacking people up where he wants to hack yeah, them wants up. Yeah, he wants to hack them up. He knows that he can't <laughs> because he doesn't want to ruin a good thing. So he's got to wait until, you know, 
you, whatever type of James Bond mission, he's got to get the guy alone or something <laughs> like that to hack him up. He can't hack him up with any witnesses or something <laughs> like that. But the guy's always got somebody with him, so... So that that would be the crux of the of this movie, and then from then on, you know, you could just do sequel after sequel, <laughs> where it's like James Bond is a spy. Maybe in the next movie, uh, not James Bond, Jason. Uh, Jason Voorhees is a spy. Perhaps in the next movie, you know, you know, like he has Sky to Ball. go rogue <laughs> or something like that. Or perhaps there's a you know a rogue nation growing within the CIA that he's working for now or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, some fancy you know. Secret government. Yeah, some secret government inside of the regular government that he has to go in and hack all to death and everything like that. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he has to go rogue and hack somebody to death. He, he either goes rogue. It's a you point. know, you do all the, you do all the standard spy things, but with Jason, I think that would breathe new life into this. And uh, yeah, and it'd be great. And uh, the bad guy in this movie, the guy that he's got to kill all alone, would be played by Ray Fiennes. <laughs> 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 okay, um, who would direct it? Who would direct this one? Martin Campbell. Martin Campbell will direct it? Yeah, Martin Campbell. I'm going to have Martin Campbell, the director of Casino Royale, the best James Bond movie, and uh, because it's going to be kind of that tone anyways. Maybe we'll even have like a torture scene where the guy, Ray Fine, takes uh, Jason up to a chair and then he's hitting him in the balls or whatever and then Jason just stands up and breaks the chair <laughs> and then just hacks him to death and that's the ending. <laughs> it's like, where'd you get that machete from? Yeah, he's like, where'd you get that machete from? And he's just like, I was got the machete. And then he just hacks him in the balls <laughs> back with the machete and then just walks out, just smashes through a brick wall or whatever. Uh, Jason usually does. <laughs> <laughs> like it's paper. <laughs> yep, just like paper. Okay, and then he walks into the night, and it's like... Yeah, walks into well, the night, he gets into an Aston Martin, and then drives away. <laughs> and then, yeah, and it's... <laughs> as he's turning That's the his... Da -da -da -da. <laughs> da -da -da. <laughs> That's his James Bond and, song. And, you know, there's a little ending thing where it shows him, like, walking down in a white room, and there's, like, a scope looking at him. <laughs> Just like in the James Bonds, and he turns and he like <laughs> throws, <laughs> throws the machete. machete at it, and they're like, ah! and, and the blood, the blood <laughs> spurts down. Yeah, just like James Bond, but you know, Jason Voorhees. <laughs> Let's say like Jason Voorhees will return. Yes, Jason Voorhees. Well, they all have, like, um, new titles. Like, it'll be like, you know, Skyfall, yeah, Spectre. Yeah, it'll be like Friday the 13th, you know, uh, friggin' Eclipse. <laughs> Or whatever, because Ray finds a you know building machine that's going to eclipse the sun. Yep. <laughs> He's like, it's going to eclipse the sun, Mister Voorhees. Yeah. <laughs> Jason just like, <laughs> and he just slashes because he doesn't back. really care. No, he doesn't care. He just wants to kill. No. <laughs> That's why he's the perfect government spy. And Brian Cox just, you know, he's he just loves him. He's just so like, Brian Cox I wish the, I had 15 of you. <laughs> Brian Cox is his, like, M or whatever. Yeah, he's like the M, except he, you know, M always gives James Bond shit and stuff. He's just like, I completely stand by everything that Jason Voorhees does out there. He's our operative, and he's the man for our America. <laughs> Yeah, and then you could have some, like, sequels where, like, they're coming in and they're like, Jason is, you know, reckless. He's, you know, just yeah. killing mindless people. And he's like, but he gets results. He gets, he results. gets things done. <laughs> he has an 84 confirmed kill. <laughs> and that's just only been, like, half, six months. And that's been in six months <laughs> with a machete. Yeah. <laughs> the same machete. <laughs> you won't let us give him a new one. <laughs> The same machete. It's not even sharp anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so you know they feel the pain. <laughs> yeah, they get tetanus shots. They have to get tetanus shots and everything. Well, they're dead. <laughs> yeah, I mean. So yeah, that's that one. Directed by Martin Campbell. Ball smashing scene and everything. And everyone would love be like... Love story? Fine. No, no love story. You like, wouldn't even be like, my mom... Yeah, Whatever. yeah, you wouldn't even deal with the mom anymore. Just straight up no emotions. <laughs> like I said, he'd probably, like, bang a couple chicks. <laughs> but <laughs> it would just be kind of like they're trying to bang him to, like, try and, you know, you know, maybe the bad guy sent them to, like, you know, go entertain Mr. Voorhees. 
<laughs> and keep them busy while I'm eclipsing the sun. Yeah, and there could be a scene where, like, you know, like they, like, close the door or whatever, and it cuts to, like, a few minutes later. Yeah. And, like, Jason's, like, getting dressed in, like, his, like, you know, tattered yeah, clothes tattered or whatever. Clothes. And she's, like, laying in the bed, and he, like, crawl, crawls out the window. <laughs> he, like, crawls out the drain, drain pipe or whatever while she's sleeping to, like, go and, like... On some secret mission or whatever, yeah, just go on. on Ray Fines or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just love the fact that he puts on his old tattered like yeah. swamp clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's still got his old swamp clothes on. <laughs> and he's like, I have to do some surveillance. Yeah, even when he puts on the tuxedo, it's like a swampy tuxedo. <laughs> yeah, it's like torn and tattered. All tattered tuxedo. So yeah, there we go. That's. Two movies right there that I guaranteed. Think, uh, guaranteed they're very similar because <laughs> they're both like they're black ops missions. Yeah, I was on a very <laughs> I was on a big black ops uh, uh, kick today. A black guess. ops kick. Yeah, where I was like, man, it'd be cool to take these characters and make them like government assassins. <laughs> Forty-eight confirmed kills, all of that stuff. Yep. Well. Those those sound pretty interesting. I definitely see. I like to see the Jason one. <laughs> I don't really care too much about Transformers anymore. Not even the. <laughs> I mean. Not even the Black Ops Transformer no. one with Nicholas. Because they're all almost pretty much like that, anyways. <laughs> yeah, <I suppose. laughs> they're like they that in the it. first like ten minutes, anyways. And like, I got enough of this. All right, all right. But so, I knew what you're saying. It was funny. <laughs> <laughs> so we gonna play uh, play uh, the game. It's that time of the show where we like to play the movie pitching game, where we like to take two random actors and one random franchise, and one of us has to come up with the movie on the spot. All right, Jackson, so I just pulled out the random random movies and random actors. Are you ready? All right, let's see. All right, so your random movie is you have to do remake Jingle All the Way. Ooh, tough one. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sinbad. Classic. Um, Anakin Skywalker, Little Boy, Jake yep. Lloyd. Um, but the two actors are Wesley Snipes okay. and Rowan Atkinson. And Rowan Atkinson? Yep, uh, Mr. Bean himself. Oh, that's not too bad. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think this could work. Uh, so I would probably pitch a remake. You know, we do... A Straight l- remake? Yep, along the similar lines of the story. We'd be like uh, Wesley Snipes, is a, he's a father. You know, he's got a son. Um, you know, just a little boy, whatever. Uh, doesn't matter who plays him. Could be the <laughs> little boy from Creed. Uh, <laughs> plays his son. And uh, his son is like, oh, Dad, I want the... You know, new blade action figure. <laughs> and he's like, well. <laughs> and he's like, I think I can get it. And then he gets it for him. And it's the end of it. no. <laughs> no, but there's some superhero action figure. Yeah, like a Turbo gone. Man. Turbo like. Man. You could even bring back Turbo Man. Yeah, he could be Turbo Man. Turbo Man. He brings back Turbo Man. And uh, he's like, I want to get Turbo Man. You know what? I think we could take the similar story, but even. You know, because we got Wesley Snipes. Uh, you know what? Never mind. We'll just we'll just go with that. Where he is looking all over for this toy and things like that. He tries to get it on Amazon. He goes to every different website and stuff like that. They're all sold out. All sold out. So then he decides, oh, I'm gonna have to go to the store for this. So he goes to every store, and they're all sold out too. Well, as you remember, he um he was gonna do this day before like Christmas. He was like, you know, gonna try to like. Go to the stores before Christmas to try to get these mo- to get these uh, te- these uh, toys. Mm-hmm. So is he gonna do it day before Christmas? Maybe like he's like, oh yeah, I'll buy it for you, and then they're like, make sure because tomorrow's Christmas or whatever, and he's like, oh snap. Yeah, it's still gonna be the day before Christmas, and uh, Rowan Atkins plays like a stuffy British man who, uh, well maybe not stuffy, he's a, just a British man <laughs> who's trying to get it too because he's a collector. And he's like, you know, I need it for my collection. <laughs> so it's not the Sinbad male. Yeah, he's not like, wanted for his son either. He's just no, a he's just like a collector. And he's like, I must have it in my collection. <laughs> and he's <laughs> very Johnny English, <laughs> uh, Mr. Bean like. You know, he does all his classic comedy moves. And then we get to see Wesley Snipes, you know, use his comedy chops a little bit here. Bring it back to... <laughs> what comedy chops? <laughs> <laughs> he's been in comedy movies. Like what? But then, White Man Don't Jump. 
white men can't jump? So he'd be like making fun of white people? <laughs> yeah, he'd be making fun of Mr. Bean like, and stuff jump. like, you can't jump. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then he'd jump up to the top <laughs> shelf and grab the toy <laughs> or whatever, but then it would explode or something like that. So then they'd have to go <laughs> and keep going to different stores just like in Jingle All the Way and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then maybe you have like, uh, you know... Uh, Jay Farrow is in it as like the guy that tries to have it on with Wesley Snipes' wife. <laughs> <laughs> He's the Phil Hartman He's character. He's the Phil Hartman character. Or maybe Keenan or something like that. Some guy from SNL. <laughs> and uh, then at the end, Wesley Snipes dresses up like Turbo Man, flies around. Uh, and fights Mr. Bean. <laughs> yeah, because Mr. Bean dresses up like the villain guy. And yeah, because he, he had the costume already because yeah. he was uh, a collector. <laughs> collector. <laughs> and, uh, but then he doesn't give it to Mr. Bean. He just gives it to his son. And then then he beats up uh, Jay Farrow with karate. <laughs> well, he doesn't, he doesn't give it to Sinbad. His son gave it to Sinbad at the end because he was like, who cares? My dad's Turbo Man. Yeah, and we all are hard. I, sp- I suppose yeah, his son could give it to Mr. Bean, and, and it's like, like Mr. Oh, Bean right. likes the stuff more than I do. Yeah, my dad is terrible. Yeah, my man. dad is Blade. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, Disney can make this movie and yeah. uh, use Blade. Yeah, I was <laughs> Disney presents. <laughs> Blade. <laughs> this is how you're going to be Blade again, Wesley Snipes. <laughs> you get to dress up like Blade one more time. remake of Jingle All the Way. Classic movie. Classic Christmas. Like, uh, Holiday just, special. Just, can I just do like Turbo Man? <laughs> yeah. Like, no, you got to do Blade. Yeah, but I think that'd do it. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. You got one. <laughs> that got was one. actually not a bad uh, cast there that they gave me. All right, so here's one for you. Um, let's see, let me... Oh, who are you going to get to direct it? Ooh, I was going to go with Tyler Perry. <laughs> but then I was like, yeah, but yeah, Tyler Perry, he hasn't done a Christmas movie yet, I don't think. Oh, he's doing that idea Christmas movie. He's doing it? Well, he hasn't done it yet, so <laughs> maybe it'll well, come out. Well, the trailer out. just came out, but whatever, yeah, he can do it. Yeah, it hasn't come out yet, so, um... Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Tyler Perry starring Wesley Snipes and Rowan Atkinson, directed by Tyler Perry. Okay, so okay, so you have a uh, Wizard of Oz movie, you know, franchise, anything like that, you know. So you could do Wizard of Oz, you could do like Wicked, you could do the Great and Powerful Oz type movie, or you can just spin it off of some other character with. Angelina Jolie and Jason Schwartzman. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Look at that cast there. That's not too bad. At least they're both actors. <laughs> well, yeah. They're both actors. <laughs> okay. Um. And it's Wizard of Oz world. Okay, so I'll do it like this. Um. Jason, Jason, Jason Schwartzman. Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of a semi remake of uh, Wizard of Oz, I suppose. Well, yeah, yeah, it's a remake of Wizard of Oz. Um, Jason Schwartzman, right? He uh-huh. is a uh, long distant relative of Dorothy from the '30s. You know. Okay, so he's like Kansas. the modern. He's like descendant yeah. of yeah, Dorothy. He's modern descendant Dorothy of Dorothy is his great grandmother or whatever. Yeah, or whatever, yeah. And he's like, you know, man, my my great grandmother always said how like, you know, she was all crazy and stuff cuz she said like she went through like a weird tornado and like ended up in Oz and like met all these colorful creatures and stuff like that and that was some bullshit, mm-hmm. right? And like, you know, maybe you get Wes Anderson to direct it cuz I don't know. Jason Schwartz. Jason Schwartz. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, like um he's like, you know, driving his car one day and like a hurricane hits him or whatever mm-hmm. and he ends up in Oz and you see the little model car <laughs> yeah. go around and around because it's Wes Anderson yeah because yeah, <laughs> it's a model car it's Wes Anderson uh, yeah he gets hit by like a hurricane instead of a tornado this time a hurricane oh and, um, so he goes to underwater Oz well he just goes to Oz oh, okay. he's like, he's like mm-hmm. ah Oz I'm in Oz what is this place and you know it's it's like um, 
real, like, dark and decrepit now, because, like, you know... It's like a Tim burton Oz. <clears throat> well, maybe not Tim burton more like Zack Snyder. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, Sucker Punchy looking. Um, uh, yeah, so we re- we come to realize that, like, you know, you know, all of them, everybody's, like, uh, all the characters you loved are dead. So, mm-hmm. like, you know, Cowardly Lion, Tin Man, you know, all of them, they just died of old age, and, like, you know, Wicked Witch, they all did, and stuff like that. But, like, um... You find out that the Wicked Witch had a daughter, played by Angelina Jolie. Oh snap! And she's not green. She's like Angelina lime Jolie green. Skin. Oh, <laughs> she's just like lighter green because okay. she had it with like normal. Because she, she's half. She green. had it with the wizard. Oh, okay, okay, with the wizard. So yeah. she's only got half powers, but she's also very uh, sneaky. Yeah, she's very sneaky <laughs> and like, but she's like, like I said, lime green, light green, that type of color. Maybe like. Um, yeah. Like Gamora green. green. No, nah, not so Gamora green, because that's Wicked Witch green. I'm talking like lime green. Lime okay. green. We'll go with lime green. Um, So she's like, you know, I have taken over Oz, you know, since your assistant Dorothy left. And he's just like, what the hell? My grandmother was right. You know, this is crazy. And like Angelina Jolie's trying to kill him and stuff. And then like Jason Schwartzman like figures out like with his quirkiness and, you know, stuff is able to defeat uh, Angelina Jolie and then wakes up and then like Angelina Jolie's there like giving him like mouth to mouth and it's actually Angelina Jolie and he's like whoa and he's like I had a dream and you were there <laughs> and she was like mm. and just like steals yeah, his wallet yeah she's just a random oh. <laughs> <laughs> well she's actually Angelina Jolie oh the actress yeah okay <laughs> that makes sense yeah so she's giving him mouth to mouth and he wakes up and he's like well I just you know this is crazy was I really an ass and she's like no you were here the whole time idiot and then like he's that's the end of the movie okay that'd be interesting <laughs> I think uh, the only other thing that I would go ahead and add is uh, it would be cool if like you know maybe the whole world was like you know maybe Angelina Jolie rules over the whole thing but there's like sections that are ruled by the like ten men or something <laughs> like that which are the descendants of the original ten men who you know they're they've inbred yeah that's <laughs> like old man Logan <laughs> <laughs> well not inbred but you know there's he's bred with other ten women <laughs> ten men and ten women ten men and ten women to create like an army of ten and then there's men. like the lions. but they're all very like you know helpful and stuff like that the lions yeah, they're all brave and stuff, and, like, you know, the scarecrows are all super geniuses and stuff. Oh, so it's shown that they've all, like, you know... Yeah, that they've... Those traits that they got were inherited to their yeah, offsprings. <laughs> yeah, so the lions are all brave, the scarecrows are all smart. Yeah, the and crows. And the tin men all have, like, um... Yeah, they're all very compassionate. Yeah, compassionate. They feel for you. Yeah. Was there some... No, there wasn't anybody else, was there? No, this is the Toto. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's got like a iPhone. Yeah. And it's called Toto instead of Siri or yeah, something like he's that. He's got Toto iPhone <laughs> digital assistant. And he's like, Toto, tell me where I am. And yeah, it's like, which way I to go? And it's just like, follow the yellow brick road. <laughs> and he's like, what? Uh, yeah, that's not too bad. I don't know about Wes Anderson, but. <laughs> well, I could, I mean, when I'm thinking of uh, but, Jason uh, Schwartzman, I'm like, who could direct Who could Jason direct Schwartzman? him? He's too crazy and wild for any other director to be able to handle. Yeah, no. So it's like, who else could have been him? But I guess uh, like I mean, <laughs> like you said, uh, Zack Snyder. <laughs> would, I guess Zack Snyder would be all right if it's going to be a Zack Snydery world, where you know the Wicked Witch is like kicking people in the holes and stuff like that. This is us. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to find you one here real quick. So we got one more movie. Let's see what the randomizer gives us. Two random uh, celebrities and two are in one uh, random film franchise. We'll see what I got. Let me see. Because they're giving me some... They're just giving me, like, Star Wars and stuff like that, and I don't really want to choose Star Wars for you. Um... Okay. You have to remake Wall Street. Okay. With Chris Rock and Amanda Bynes. Chris Rock and Amanda Bynes. And Wall Street. i got to remake Wall Street or sequel or spinoff. Yep. 
Okay. So Michael Douglas and them aren't coming back. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, or you could have them come back. Or I could have them come back. Um, but Chris Rock and Amanda Bynes have to be in it. Oh, jeez. This is... <laughs> This is tough. Um, so I would have... Yeah, uh, and like I said, you don't have, You could make it meta to where it's like, I just love the movie Wall Street, and I wanted <laughs> to try to be in Wall Street. Yeah, where he's like, I watch Wall Street, and then I tried to become a Wall Street guy, but then I discovered that I can't because I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> and then I met Amanda Bynes, who was crazy and likes to smoke weed. And uh, and then we smoked weed together, and then it was all cool. Is that your Wall Street pitch? There we go. Wall Street. <laughs> Wall Street 3. Um, hmm. Let's okay. see. Man, yeah, I don't know what Wall Street is about. Um, Stocks. <laughs> yeah. So, essentially, this would be about the, the housing crisis. Caused by Wall Street, so it'd be Wall Street housing crisis, and it's about <laughs> Chris Rock and uh, Amanda Bynes are two separate people that both got evicted from their homes because of Wall Street overspending, and uh, they meet in like a like a uh, like a Christian center or something like that because they're like we got to spend the night here because we got <laughs> evicted out of our homes or whatever, and they're both. Uh, they both kind of get really angry and crazy, and uh, Amanda Bynes, being uh, being a card carrying member of the NRA, is like, well, they may have evicted my homes, but they haven't taken my large <laughs> cache of weapons. So they haven't they, evicted my guns. Yeah, they haven't evicted my guns, which they'll have to pry out of my cold, dead hands. So her and Chris Rock team up, grab the guns, storm into Wall Street, and start shooting up the place. And uh, do some vigilante justice until they both get taken down by uh, by uh, by a cop by guy. Michael Douglas, <laughs> who makes a cameo—not cameo, but kind of a return at the very end—and you know comes in and like you know karate chops both of them in the <laughs> back of the neck. They fall <laughs> over. They're taken to jail, and uh, and that's it. Based on a true story <laughs> of who. Well, I mean, that's what we'll say. It'll be like Fargo, <laughs> <laughs> where we say it's based on a true it's story, not. but it's not. Okay. There we go. It's uh, Wall, Street. Wall Street housing crisis. Set in the same world. Who's going to direct it? Who's going to direct it? This would be directed by probably uh, one of the dudes that did Crank. <laughs> <laughs> just one of them, not both of them? Yeah, just one of them. We're only taking one. <laughs> <laughs> that's my prediction. <laughs> That's who you want to direct the... <laughs> it goes from Oliver Stone to one of the guys that did Crank. Just one of the two guys that did Crank. There you go. <laughs> and it's an action movie with a cameo by Michael Douglas. Small cameo. Small cameo. Would Charlie Sheen be in it? Uh, yeah, but he'd get killed. <laughs> uh, so would Shia LaBeouf. Uh, Josh Brolin? Uh, no, Josh Brolin wouldn't be in it. Okay. <laughs> Just Shia LaBeouf and Charlie Sheen. They get killed immediately. Yeah, and maybe Mel Gibson or something. <laughs> and he gets killed too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there you have it, guys. Um, so we pitched a Transformers spinoff movie. Yep, Transformers um, spinoff. And movie. as well as a Friday the Thirteenth continuation. Continuation. Um, and we also did our random movie pitching game where we did Wizard our of Oz. Wizard of Oz was mine and it was terrible <sighs> and then you did um wall street, oh, wall and, street um, which was terrible <laughs> and jingle all the way jingle all the way yep okay well like i said there you have it guys we uh pitched movies we had laughs and we went home we went home so should you and make a friend have fun goodbye for movie morons i'm holden and i'm jackson See ya.